Right, let's have a look now back to South African politics. We can't escape it. Find out more about the implications of the recent uh, ANC uh, NEC outcome uh, and the effect on the economy, on confidence and other aspects of society. I'm joined by Marius Oosthuizen from Gibbs. Good evening to you, uh, Marius. Uh, if we look at uh, the ructions within the NEC over the future of uh, President Zuma, it's hard to read uh, whether optimism is justified from either side. On the one hand, some people are saying, well, it's a sign that President Zuma's position has been weakened. It's also a sign that he's going to stay and policy paralysis uh, continues. Well, I think you've put your finger on that we certainly will see an increase in the period of policy uncertainty. I think South African business leaders are waking up to the reality that we live in a country where politics seems to dominate the news cycle, and that's probably going to be like that for uh, quite some time to come. And so it's, it's really in the interest of business to absorb what uh, Minister of Finance, uh, Provin Gordon, has called the political noise and really look past that at the fundamentals of the economy and decide to invest and make decisions on that basis. I suppose, Marius, also, and you do this in your work at Gibbs, I mean, one of the things you teach there... Uh, is the certainty that there will be uncertainty. And in a way, one is tiring of people saying, all this uncertainty. I mean, this, this is part of uh, life, and businesses, really good businesses, have got to manage through it, haven't they? Well, you know, we are in an emerging economy. We're in an economy that's uh, got a political system that's only 20 years old, 22 years old. You know, that's younger than most of our large corporations. And so there is a healthy uh, element of... Uh, maturity to say that, look, this is the nature of an emerging economy with very contested political uh, arrangements across the society. At the same time, though, I think we have seen it, uh, very recently that business is waking up to the realization that it is itself a social actor and possibly has been too quiet and that this perhaps is a time for business to exercise its voice, to be more strategic and coordinated in the way in which it addresses the state and government in particular. Well, it's the way it's done, isn't it? Um, we all have memories of uh, companies like Sassel uh, being slapped down when they mentioned empowerment as a risk, for example. Generally, chief executives and chairmen have been careful to keep their heads below the parapet and saying that they want to focus on, on what they do. But in South Africa, and I'm sure this is a discussion point for you at Gibbs, we can't afford that anymore. Well, you know, we talk about uh, activist shareholders in the business world I think business is beginning to realize that in the context of the country, uh, business is a shareholder and there's an element of activism necessary. From time to time, business has to, particularly at times when government is acting in narrow political interests, in party interests, as we saw the NEC do, talking about unity versus within the party versus the interests of the country. I think that at those times, business needs to take an activist approach. And of course, there are some reputational risks that come with that. But I think society at large in a country like ours that's got an open uh, free media, society will be able to decide for themselves whether business is speaking from a narrow business interest or on behalf of the interest of the nation. Yeah. It's a balancing act, isn't it? A fine balancing act. On the one hand, business must engage with government, but it must also reserve the right to be critical. And I suppose if you can get that right, uh, that's the aim, but uh, not easy. Well, our advice at the moment to business you know, dealing with this question is, increasingly to look at a local level. We, you know, we talk often about the high politics in the country, the battle between the Zuma faction and the other factions in the ANC or the rise of the opposition. But increasingly, if you look at a country like South Africa with large metropolitan areas, uh, with 40% of the people living in urban settings, with large migration to, ur to urban settings, increasingly the view from our side is that business can work with government very constructively, particularly at a local level, and find those uh, areas of agreement around infrastructure and other investments that would unlock growth and, and ultimately be in business's own interest. The, the guys that you work with at Gibbs, Marius, what's the mood coming out of them now? Uh, these are the, the present and future leaders of the economy. Well, there's an interesting element of, uh, of pragmatism coming through from business in our, in our uh, estimation of it. You know, over the last decade or so, we've seen South African captains of industry look north to the rest of the, Af the continent of Africa or look to places in the Middle East and elsewhere looking for new markets, looking for growth. Uh, I think some of those are realizing that often those markets are fraught with complexity and difficulty and, and returning home and saying, look, you know, maybe there is some room in South Africa to grow and develop. But at the same time, you know, they do acknowledge that we're headed into a very difficult political period where we see the ANC weaken. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the, the tripartite alliance is something of the past uh, with Kasatu uh, supporting the deputy president, uh, the Communist Party questioning their support for the ANC. And I think most businesses would look at that and say, 
We're probably in for 10 or 15 years of political instability, uh, but perhaps instability is a strong word, political uh, t- t- turmoil or a bit of, uh, of uh, turbulence in the system. But I think beyond that, if businesses take a 15 or 20 year view, South Africa is still a great place to invest. It's got great institutions, good infrastructure, uh, great proximity to the rest of the continent of Africa. And I think it's a combination of that pragmatism with optimism. Good place to end. That is Marius Oosthuizen from the Gordon Institute for Business Science.